Charles is on the floor, looks dead. Didn't move. Body didn't move, didn't twitch, nothing. Nothing. The coach is out. <sighs> Out of the sauna, hey, hey guys, you know, hey guys, and just kind of, hey, just weird energy, right? Because we're like, oh yeah, we're fighting you. So the coach comes down, comes out of the sauna, and he's kind of walking around, he comes over, he says, hey, coach, coach, hey, what's up, coach? He goes, hey, coach, uh, man, can I, can I give you a tip? What's up, guys? Mike Dolce, four-time world MMA trainer of the year, the most successful weight-cutting coach in the history of combat sports. During the 20-plus year career I have had working with the world's greatest athletes, I've seen some stuff. I've seen some crazy stuff. I've gone to new fight camps to work with new athletes for the first time, and I hear them and their team tell me all the crazy, weird stuff they would do in order to lose weight. I mean, we can talk about slathering the body with alboline. That doesn't work. We can talk about drinking distilled water, handfuls of spinach and protein powder for weeks on end. Yeah. That doesn't work. We can talk what they do locking the athletes in saunas and just all this craziness. But today I want to talk about a very specific instance, a fight story. Nick Lentz versus Charles Oliveira in at Foxwoods in Connecticut. And let me just refresh as I'm looking here with you right now. UFC Fight Night 50, Foxwoods Resorts Casino in Ledyard, Connecticut. Now, this was a big fight. This was a big fight between Lentz and Oliveira because there was bad blood. Their first fight, previously in 2011, had ended due to a no contest from an illegal knee Oliveira threw at Lentz, who was down. Now, Lentz felt Oliveira wanted out of the fight and intentionally threw that knee to illegally win or get tossed. And the fight got tossed, ruled a no contest, and the bad blood continued. Finally, these two featherweights were destined to meet up, and they did move forward to this bout at Foxwood. Now, the UFC flies us in. All teams, all corners, we get there on Tuesday before the fight. You get there on Tuesday, you land, they pick you up at the airport. It's all very nice. They bring you to the host hotel. They bring you downstairs to the conference room. You got to sign the posters. You get your contracts in order. You get your little per diem. You step on the scale in front of Burt Watson. We rolling! Yeah! Burt Watson, who's not there anymore, but was a, a just a pivotal part of the UFC process at that time. And Burt comes up later in the story. So we get all done. We get all set up. Now, Lentz is a big guy. Lentz is a big guy. Lentz is coming down from the high 60s, low 70s to make 45. And man, Lentz is a savage. Let me tell you, I love working with Nick Lentz back in these days for sure. But savage nonetheless. So we go in, we get set up, we get Nick set up in his room. I got my own room because that's the way Uncle Mike rolls. I'm not sharing toilets with nobody. And I'm a motherfucking I get my own room, I get my own thing, I got my own deal going on here. So bang, I get set up, Nick gets set up. We say, hey, let's meet downstairs at seven o'clock. Let's get this plain weight off of us. Let's break a little sweat, hop in the hot tub, a little splash around and chill. Fortunately, it's at the Foxwood Casinos. They got a great spa, hot tubs and saunas and treadmills and ellipticals and, and wet saunas and, and steam rooms and all the good stuff that you would expect. So, Lentz and I, we meet up at the elevators, we go downstairs. Now, Nick is a gamer. I don't even know all the tech stuff he's got going on, but he, he it's like he's in the Millennial Falcon, right? He's got all this gear and stuff, and he's ready to go. I got my own little um, iPhone, iPod, earbud thing going on. And usually, we just chit-chat talk about whatever, and Lentz just kind of tells me some really cool stories about stuff that he's into during our weight cuts. But this first cut, first cut we go downstairs, and the hot tub is great. And it's empty. And I love that. And the hot tub is always empty during fight week because all the knucklehead fighters and all their knucklehead coaches don't have them in the hot tub. They have them working their asses off way too much while in a caloric deficit, dehydrated on zero carbs, zero sodium. Makes no sense. Not what we do. So what do we do? We hop in the hot tub. As we're getting set up in the hot tub, we look in the hot tub. We're like, damn, 
who's that dude in there? This is Tuesday night. Tuesday night, someone's already in the hot tub or in, in the sauna. Because where you are in the hot tub, you can actually look right across and there's the sauna. So I can sit in the hot tub and I can stare through the glass of the sauna and see everyone in there. And it was a big sauna. And I see a dude laying on the floor, look like a dead body wrapped in plastic. Plastic bags, hat on, hoodie on, glasses on, like sunglasses on. What's going on, dude? Uh, it was like, like weekend at Bernie's, right? So I'm looking at that and there's a coach sitting in there. Coach is just kind of sweating away naked except for a little sunga, which is like a, a Speedo, right? We're sitting there like, man, that, that dude's, whoever that dude is, that's not good. It's Tuesday night and they're cutting that hard plastics on a, in a sauna on a Tuesday night? What the fuck's going on? So Lentz and I, we're in there. We're just chilling, shooting the shit. Lentz immediately starts sweating. We do the thing. We hang out. Well, guess what? Right before we're ready to leave, we're in there a good 30, 45 minutes. Right before we're ready to leave, we see the coach get over, slapping, leaning over, talking, talking, talking. Finally picks up the dude he's working with. It's Charles Oliveira. It's Lentz's opponent. We're like, whoa. Dude's cutting that hard on a Tuesday night? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We're here splashing around, drinking water, hydrate. We're like super hydrating the whole time. Hydrating and sweating in the hot tub the whole time, having fun. Lentz was playing a game for a while, then he was on Netflix for a bit. We're shooting this shit, talking back and forth. It was just like, you know, a couple buddies on vacation, just hanging out in the spa. That's what we were doing. They were damn near dying already, literally, literally. So they kind of get dragged down, go upstairs. We're like, Phew. Well, that's not good. We go upstairs, we eat, we hang out a little bit, bang, go to bed, wake up the next day, we hang out, we breakfast, we this and that. Now, our days are usually very simple during fight week. We hang out. We don't do a lot of hard work during fight week. All the work has been done. All the hard work has been done. Deload starts 10 days out. You really start to hit that peak as you continue on. You get a few little short um, pushes as you go through. But once you get to Tuesday into Wednesday, all the work's done, right? So we're not working hard. We're not taking that, <gasps> that deep breath while trying to reduce weight, right? We're just getting the, what we call passive cutting or soft cutting, which is really in the hot tub, bathtub, hot tub, super chill, super easy, breathing room temperature air the whole time. No stress, no mess, no problem. So midday, we make our way back downstairs. We walk into the, into the, the spa and in the locker room, it looks like, man, it, it looks like like the the, the room in, in Saw, right? It looks like there was just a slaughter. There's just stuff all over the place and like, like, a, like a terrible college frat party. Something weird happened. There's just stuff, gear everywhere and clothes spilled all over the floor and, and boxing gloves and like wraps on the ground. And there's a mouthpiece and there's just crap. Now, it was all kind of centered in one area, and it looked like it was really only one person. Like, man, this is bad manners, if nothing else. I mean, bad manners. You clean up. You leave a place the way you found it, or you leave it better than the way you found it. I mean, that's the way I grew up, and that's certainly the way as a professional we try to conduct ourselves. You always clean. This place was a disgusting mess. You go walk it through, we're like, oh, this is fucking gross. This is rude. Walking in the sauna, walking in the, to the hot tub, getting set up. We look again. Guess who's in there? Again. Charles and his coach again are in that sauna. Charles is on the floor, looks dead. Didn't move. Body didn't move, didn't twitch, nothing. Nothing. The coach is out. <sighs> Out of the sauna, hey, hey, guys, you know, hey, guys, and just kind of, hey, just weird energy, right? Because we're like, oh, yeah, we're fighting you. Lentz and I are sitting there. We're like, oh, man, this is awesome. Dude is killing himself, and we're just chilling. Lentz's weight's coming down. He's exactly where he was supposed to be. Now, Lentz is cutting a lot of weight because he's a big dude coming down from low 70s to make 46. Big dude, but... It's a system. We knew exactly what Lentz is going to lose, exactly what he loves. We, he, we know what he was going to lose at what specific time. And we were able to systematically get him to exactly where he needed to be to the minute. Now, weight cutting is never easy. 
ladies and gentlemen, don't get it twisted. Weight cutting is never easy. I'm not going to say for one second that any weight cut is, quote, supposed to feel easy feel easy now it's easy when you look at the numbers you make weight again 100 percent success ratio but you got to give the athlete a ton of respect for for digging down deep in their soul and that's why i love nick lentz fucker digs deep got the weight done exactly what it's supposed to do and he does it without a complaint i never heard nick Lentz ever complain by the way that's an aside here but anyway we're looking we're like damn Man, I don't know if Charles, we're talking like, I don't know if Charles is going to be able to fight. Is he going to make weight? If they're cutting that hard, then it's like, man, if they're cutting that hard this early, he's got to make weight. I mean, how big can he be if they're cutting that hard since Tuesday night? I can't imagine they're going to miss weight, right? So anyway, we continue on. We do our hot tub. The coach is in and out, just kind of peeling himself off. Athletes in there laying on the floor dead. Finally. The athlete starts to, like, move a little bit. Coach yells into the locker room, hey, you know, in, in, in Portuguese. I understand Portuguese. Ha, ah, Brazilians, you didn't know that. I understand Portuguese. Guys, guys, get in here. I need help. I need help. He's yelling to, to some of the, 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 the dudes in, in the locker room. They all come scrambling in. They all bend over. They pick Charles up. This is Wednesday. This is Wednesday. They pick him up and walk him out of the sauna so his feet are dragging on the ground. He's not even taking steps. He's not even taking steps. His feet are dragging on the ground. It's fucking insane. On Wednesday, in the sauna, 180 degree oven in plastics with, with hat, like hat and gloves or socks. I think he had socks over his hands, not gloves. And, and socks on his feet just packed in there like a sausage dying. Dragged out. Wentz and I are like, damn, man, this is this is not good. Almost, almost felt bad. I felt bad for Charles um, because I saw what his coaches were doing to him. I got to put a lot of it onto the coaches because the coaches were telling him what to do. And I saw that. Now, we move forward to Thursday. Thursday, we go back down and we go down. They're already in there. Charles is already in there again. again. It's, does he? Maybe that's his room. Maybe Foxwoods ran out of rooms and they gave Charles Oliveira the sauna to be his bedroom. They, they didn't even give the dude a pillow, but I mean, he didn't need a blanket because it's 180 degrees in there, right? They probably booked him into the sauna because maybe they ran out of rooms. I don't, I don't know what, what the deal was with that. Every time we went down to the hot tub, Charles was in the fucking sauna. So we go down this time. Now there's like three dudes in there with Charles. The coach, and I, I don't know the coach's name, and I apologize. I, I wish I, I did. Coach comes out. I've seen him a few times before, and everything's friendly. I'm friendly with everybody. Right? There's no ill will. Everyone's getting paid. High five, man. I hope you guys got a great contract. We got a good contract. High five. Let's get paid. Have a good fight, right? Especially at the coach level. There's no animosity. Coach comes out. We're hanging out. Now, Lentz is like just a few pounds over. I think maybe seven pounds over or so. If I, my memory recalls, I have it in my notebooks um, I, I, as I'm doing this right now. So probably right around seven pounds or so over. So we're like almost on now in, in you know, UFC um, vernacular. Seven pounds over is you're basically on. Uh, a day and a half before, and a little bit more than a day before. This is when the weigh-ins were at 4 p.m. So the coach comes down, comes out of the sauna, and he's kind of walking around and comes over. He says, hey, coach, coach. Hey, what's up, coach? He goes, hey, coach, uh, man, can I, can I give you a tip? Yeah, of course, of course, what's up? And he goes, you know what you're doing, what you're doing here, this doesn't work. So, what, are you, what are you talking about? He's like, no, the hot tub, the hot tub doesn't work, man. It doesn't work. You won't lose weight. I'm like, oh, yeah? What do you mean? He's like, no, it's, it's not hot enough, brother. It's not hot enough. You won't lose weight. He's like, but I can help you. I will. Let me help you. Let me help you. I was like, well, how are you going to help? He goes, I have salt. I have big bags of big bags of salt. I'll pour salt into the hot tub. I was like, no, 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 no. We're good. We're good. Do not go pour five pound bags of salt into the Foxwood Casino hot tub. Are you kidding me? I don't know. What's that going to be a half a million dollar bill? You're going to blow all the plumbing in the hotel? No, coach, please. He's like, no, no, no problem. man. no, I have extra. It's okay. It's okay. I'll do this for you. I'm like, no, coach, we're good. I said, we're almost on weight. He's like, no. He's like, man, he's like, man, trust me. Trust me, brother. Trust me, brother. This is not going to work. It won't work. 
And I was like, well, hey, coach, I appreciate that. I said, we're doing well right now. Thank you for the advice, but we're good. We're good. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, man. Well, if you need something, you need something, I'm here. I was like, okay, coach, I, I appreciate you looking out for us, right? We're about to fight your dude. Your dude's in there fucking dead. You're coming out to tell us what we're doing doesn't work while I, I think you just killed your guy. I think you should probably call 911, get the fucking paramedics here and the fucking paddles to revive your dude because I haven't seen that motherfucker move in the last 47 minutes that we've been hanging out watching the fucking office, shooting this shit, chilling, talking about kombucha. Right? So really weird, really fucking strange. But of course, you know, you know what's going on. So now, we fast forward, fast forward, lens bang, lens is on weight, all's good, did this, he's ready to go, he's ready to eat, but ready. We go to the fucking weigh-ins, we go to the weigh-ins and we see Charles just sitting there, fucking head in hand, hoodie on, head down, and his team's just weird. And I'm like, we walk by, what's up guys? And Coach, hey, 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 hey. All fucking weird. I was like, this is bad energy. So Lentz went and sat down. I popped back out and I grabbed one of the dudes. I won't say the name because maybe it doesn't matter or it doesn't matter. So one of the UFC guys, I grabbed him and I said, what's up with Charles? He's like, man, we think he's over. I said, what do you mean? He said, he won't step on the test scale. They have a test scale there. I said, what do you mean he won't step on the test scale? Do we know where he's at? We have like an hour and a half before weigh-ins right now. They stage us at like 2.30. weigh in start at 4.05. It's 2.30. Step on the fucking test scale, dude. Everyone's on. Lens is on. Everyone's on. No, no, no. So I go grab Bert Watson. I'm like, Bert. I said, why won't Charles get on the test scale? He's like, what do you mean? Bert's running around just fucking, you know, handling all the kids running around. Kids, I say it respectfully because he's like, he's babysitting these fucking 22 professional athletes plus their corners and teams and everything else. I said, Bert, Charles won't step on the test scale. Bert's like, oh, no. Boom. Bert beelines over. They have a conversation. I hang out. Bert comes back and he's like, we got a problem. This motherfucker's five pounds over. I was like, what? Five pounds over. He's five pounds over sitting there an hour and a half before weigh-ins. Just sitting there. Not jumping rope. Not shadow boxing. Not doing sprints. Not sitting in a little sauna. Not making everybody wait because he's still downstairs cutting. He's sitting there doing dick. Nothing. And they're all kind of, his team's all roaming around, roaming around, roaming around. So, chirping Bert's ear. Bert gets on the phone. I think, was it Shelby? Um, I, I, man, I, I think it was Shelby at this time. I think Sean Shelby. So, uh, we, we get Bert, we get Sean Shelby. We're like this, uh, uh, this is, it was Shelby actually. Cause I remember I negotiated with Shelby backstage before the fucking weigh-ins, what was going to happen. Cause Charles was going to miss a hundred percent. Charles was going to miss. And we're like, we're not fighting him fucking five pounds over. We're not fighting him. Fuck him. Fuck them. Five pounds over the fucker. Sat. If he was dripping with sweat right now, doing everything he could to cut weight, and then was five pounds over? Yeah, we'll fight him because he fucking tried and failed. We'll fight him. But the fucker's sitting there. He's got 90 minutes. Give me fucking 90 minutes. I'll get you five pounds down. No fucking problem. I guarantee that. And I've done that before. He's just fucking sitting there. Fucking the bait and switch. So Lance is fucking pissed. Lance wants to fight him right fucking then and there. Lance is a savage, like I said, man. Um, and we're just fucking up, up in arms. Now, at this point... I believe Connecticut, and I believe it was the Indian Reservation, but it was 10%. You only get 10% of the purse if the athlete misses, something along those lines. Only 10% of the purse. And and his team is like, hey, man, no, 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 no problem, no worries. No, Nick, you can start drinking right now. Start drinking right now. We'll fight it. We'll fight it 50, 150. Catch weight. We'll do a catch weight. And we're like, fuck you. No fucking weight. We're making weight. We're making weight. We didn't work this fucking hard to make weight to not make weight because you motherfuckers are too unprofessional to make weight. We're fucking making weight so the whole world knows we made it and you didn't. That's what's going down here. Now we're trying to take your motherfucking money if we fight because we might not even fight you. 
So then I'm out there negotiating uh, with, with Shelby and, and Birch there also. So we get it from 10%. We double what Nick's cut is. So instead of getting 10%, Nick gets up to 20%. But as a part of that, I negotiate a deeper clause. And it's a handshake deal. And this is a credit to the UFC and a credit to Shelby and a credit to Burt. Handshake deal was we go out there. If we take this fight, we get 20% of whatever the fuck he makes. Disclosed, non-disclosed, bonuses, whatever he makes, we, Nick gets 20% of. Whatever the commission says, fine. I don't care what they say. What you say is what matters. We get 20% of whatever he gets in his pocket. We don't care about that. He's going to be that fucking five pounds over. Now, we wanted him to cut. Wanted him to cut. We couldn't force him to cut. They went back and tried to make him cut until the very last minute. Sean's like, I, they said no. I can't force him to do that. But what else do you want? I said, if he doesn't fight, for some reason, we don't think he wants to fight. You don't come in that heavy. You don't come in that fucking heavy if you want to fight. We don't think he wants to fight. We think he's going to find a way out. If he doesn't fucking fight, you pay Nick his show money and you pay Nick his fucking win money. That's all. I want the guarantee that Nick gets his show money and his win money if Charles doesn't make it to the octagon tomorrow night. Shelby goes, no problem. Done. We sh Handshake deal. Cr give them credit, man. Give Sean Shelby. Give Dana White. Give Because Dana proves everything right. Give them the fucking credit. Sean Shelby, man of his fucking work. Done deal. We go out there, we step on the scale, Nick makes weight, Oliveira fucking misses by five pounds. We go out there, fine, we rehydrate, we wake up the next day, phone call from Shelby, fights off. Fights off. Charles pulled out of the fucking fight, they said he was sick. They said he was sick. That's why, he had a virus, he was sick. That's why he, he came over, was over by five pounds. That's bullshit. That's bullshit, because he was in the fucking sauna on Tuesday. On Tuesday, in plastics, on the floor, fucking dead. If that's the case, if you have a virus on Tuesday, you're not in the fucking sauna. You're laying up in your fucking bed until Wednesday, until Thursday, and then you try and crash cut it all off, for sure. So it was all contrived. It was all fucking bullshit. And that's, that's real. You've never heard that story before. I've never told this story before. Nick and I joked about this story many times before. It was such a shit show. Such a shit show. And there you go. So UFC Fight Night 50 at Foxwood Resorts Casino. Nick Lentz versus Charles Oliveira. That should go down as a win on Nick Lentz's record. Because Lentz was there. Lentz was on weight. Lentz was fucking ready. And they pulled out. They pulled out because they knew Nick Lentz would have fucking smashed Charles on that day, on that weekend, on that night. I have no doubt. Nick has no doubt. I don't, I think Charles' team, whoever that was, had no fucking doubt. They didn't want to fucking be there for that weekend. They didn't want to be there. They didn't want to fight fucking Lentz. And that's why they came in so high. But as an aside, what about the coach coming up to tell me? Me, the four-time world MMA trainer of the year. I mean, not at that point, but still, I was the most successful weight management coach in combat sports at that point. And this coach comes and tells me that what we're doing is wrong to cut weight and his dead guys laying on the fucking floor. So I should listen to you who I think just killed a man. We should be doing what you're doing. Are you kidding me, bro? Are you kidding me? But anyway, what do you guys think about that story? Leave your comments below. Insanity, right? Now, I, Charles has gone on and had a great career. He bumped up to 155. Good move. He's had a great career. He looks good right now. That's fine. I got nothing against Charles. I don't care. I don't know the dude. I want to see all these fighters get out there and, and, and have their good fights and get their good contracts and make their money and, and buy houses and, and put their kids through school. I want to see them all live long, healthy, safe lives. But this story was fucking crazy, right? So this is just one, one of the insane stories I've come across in my 20 plus years working with combat athletes. What do you guys think? Leave comments below. I want to hear what you think about this insanity. Hopefully you stayed with me all this time to hear this crazy fucking story. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. Could you imagine this happening in the, in the MLB, the NFL, the NBA, um, NHL, the, 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 the WNBA, the LPGA, whatever. 
What, could you imagine that level of unprofessionalism? It was absolutely insane. But again, leave comments below. Subscribe to this channel. Bang, bang. Thumbs up so I know you're there and I know you care. And until next time, boom.